The top gardening trend for 2021 are wild gardens. Because we're staying at home for longer periods, it's all about reconnecting with nature by creating a more natural, wilder looking garden. It's all about mother nature taking control. Well, allow me to help you create your wild garden by showing you how to create a miniature rock garden featuring carnivorous plants, and of course, the beautiful, wild, natural looking pumice stone. My name is Jerry from Suckle and Fly Traps. In this how-to video series, I'm gonna be breaking it up into two parts. In the first part, which I'm gonna be covering today, I'm going to be demonstrating how you can make rock planters for your carnivorous plants. I'm gonna be demonstrating how to best drill cavities into these pumice rocks. I'm gonna be demonstrating how to fill those cavities up with peat moss, which is what the carnivorous plants grow in. And I'm also going to demonstrate how to best place those carnivorous plants into those uh, pumice rocks to give them the best start. In the second part of the video series, I'm gonna be going into the finer details about how to make this beautiful carnivorous plants rock garden featuring shallow trays, carnivorous plants of course, and pumice rocks. That's why that will be the second part because once you know how to make your carnivorous plants rock planters out of pumice stone, you can then rearrange this garden any way you like. So before I start, I just wanted to highlight that you don't have to just limit yourself to carnivorous plants when making rock planters out of pumice stone or making any type of garden featuring pumice stone. Here in front of me, for example, I've got a rock planter here which features various types of succulents and bits and pieces of peat moss which I added into the cavities of the pumice stone. You can see here just how those uh, succulents are growing so well and just with their beautiful colours and textures together with the moss and the natural looking pumice stone just how it creates this beautiful wild natural effect. So before I actually show you how to drill into the rocks the question's got to be asked why use pumice rock? Well pumice rock is a volcanic, it's extremely porous, it's completely natural it is very, very lightweight. It's soft, making it really easy to work with. And because it's so porous, it's a rock which can absorb water. And that makes it ideal for putting your plants into because that, those plants which are in that rock will be nicely hydrated. What you've got to do is place the rock with your plants into a tray, just as you can see right here. And as I said, the water is absorbed into the rock, into the potting medium, whatever it is, and that'll keep your plants nice and happy. And as well as being completely natural, it's got its own sort of character, and every piece of pumice rock is unique. Not, there's not one that's the same, and it's the texture, as I said, the character, which really, really makes it special, and I guarantee you, if you've got that in your backyard or wherever it is, it's going to command attention. And there's another very important reason which makes pumice stone so special and so unique when it comes to gardening. Because the material is all natural, it's got its own texture, it's got its all cavities in there, plants of all types start to live on it. They love living on this type of rock. Being so porous, it absorbs water but there's also a lot of air in there as well which has a nice cooling effect and plants love to have their roots inside inside the rock and um, what starts to happen is that as well as the main plants that you've got in there all the other incidental plants such as mosses uh, the seeds from the plants that you have in there and anything else will start to grow around it and will start to form its own uh, mini ecosystem and that's exactly what I've discovered uh, with this carnivorous plant rock garden you know you can see if you really clo do a close-up with the camera you can really see the uh, the small plants there the mosses growing on the edge of the rocks and all these seedlings uh, starting to form and 
it's just, as I said, it's really special to see. And I particularly love to see the sphagnum moss growing in there, which is the thicker moss. So, yeah, it is a special rock, as I said. Plants love living in it. And um, as I said, it starts to form its own little micro ecosystem and uh, really does have that nice wild look. And there's another reason as well. Pumice rocks are ideal to place in ponds. Because as I said, it does absorb the water. So if you've got uh, plants which uh, don't mind getting their, their roots wet quite often, such as um, carnivorous plants, then why not try that? If you've got a pond at home, you can always put these rocks with the plants in there, whatever they are, and then place that on the side of the uh, pond, and that will look so, so nice. The plants will be growing really well uh, because the water will be absorbed. And because there's going to be a little micro ecosystem happening around there, you're going to have a very nice natural looking shoreline around the pond. So like any job, safety is the number one priority and pumice stone is no exception. It's important that when, when you're working with uh, pumice stone that you wear a dust mask. The reason is because um, pumice stone may contain silica fibres in there and then if you breathe those silica fibres in it can do some real damage to your lungs so it's really really important that you wear a good um, dust mask. Since we're going to be drilling holes into this stone it's important that you wear safety goggles. Another safety tip is when you're handling and working with this material it's a good idea to hose down the rock with fresh water that ensures that the excess dust is removed from the surface and that just uh, minimizes any airborne dust particles that you may breathe in. So as I said earlier I'm going to be drilling holes into the pumice stone to create the cavity for the plants. There are two basic types of attachments you can use to perform that function. You've got this type of attachment, I'm not sure the exact name of it, and then you have these spade type attachments. Okay, and you can see there are 38mm and 28mm widths, these spades, spade attachments. Now, I prefer these spade attachments as opposed to this one over here. I'll tell you why now. Now you can see here that you've got that center drill bit there which helps to secure that attachment first before drilling into the rock. And you can see that that drill bit extends quite a bit of distance beyond the edge of that round, uh, round drill bit. Now there's a real risk here that when you're using this type of drill bit that when you drill your hole in there that that drill bit will go all the way through the rock and you may even go to the edge of that round bit creating a hole all the way through the rock. That's not what I want to achieve, I just want to uh, drill that hole into the pumice rock without going through the actual rock itself. Okay. Now with this type of attachment, I'm not sure the exact name, I think they're called wood boring bits, you've got more control uh, with the depth of the Hole. The reason is because you can see the edge or the, the center bit here it doesn't go too far beyond the uh, edge of the spade and that's why you've got more control drilling those holes without going through the actual rock itself and that's the reason why I prefer these ones and they do say that they're wood boring uh, bits but because the pumice stone is so soft then um, these spades have no trouble at all creating those holes in the pumice rock and I've actually used these uh, spade bits many times before. Holding the rock down firmly with one hand position the tip of your drill bit into the area where you want to drill the hole. Make sure you press down firmly on the drill to avoid the drill bit from slipping. Drill next to the previously formed hole to form irregular shaped cavities within the pumice rock. Continue to press down firmly onto the drill to form a deeper cavity within the rock. 
Drilling at an angle also helps to form a larger cavity within the rock. If you see holes at the bottom of the pumice rock, simply get a piece of pumice and with your fingers, jam it into the hole to block it up. Give the rock a good rinse under a tap to remove excess pumice. The finished product. So right, I have my pumice stone planter ready. Now it's for the fun bit. I'm gonna be adding this Venus's flytrap into the pumice stone planter. So just to give you a bit of a tip here, the best time to repot carnivorous plants is late winter, early spring. So it's when they're just coming out of their dormancy or when they're just waking up out of their dormancy, okay? If you do it during those times, then your plant will recover more quickly. Now I'm way outside that time, it's well and truly into the growing season. We're a couple of days away from autumn or fall. The plant will recover, but it's just gonna take a little bit uh, longer. So just to be aware of that, if you're uh, doing this outside those peak repotting times, just to be a little bit patient with your plant. And of course, if you're doing it just before dormancy, then expect your plant to go through that dormancy period in winter. Um, before coming up in spring, okay? So the medium for this Venus's flytrap is going to be three parts peat moss to one part propagating sand. So here I'm filling the cavity with the peat moss mixture. Just fill it up till it's about half full. And then just with your fingers, just sort of move the peat moss to the sides of the cavity to allow room for the roots of your plant to go into, okay? So I'm just gonna take this Venus flytrap out of the pot, just give it a few gentle squeezes around the side of the pot, just to loosen the peat moss a bit. And then what I do to avoid damage the plant, I just get my fingers outstretched like this over the plant and then I just carefully lift it out like this. So you don't have to take it out all the way. What I like to do in this instance, I just like to, whoops, just slide that out a bit more. Just like that. And then what I do, I just sort of break apart the sides of the plant where the roots are. So any of this top bit here, see where the See where the, uh, the moss is, you can just sort of break that top bit up because we can add that to the palmus rock on the top. Just put that aside, any of those top bits containing the moss, green moss. So just keep breaking that away. And you can see there, there's, there's the roots right there. Take that top layer again and just carefully that out of the pot without breaking the roots and that's the plant there. Okay so now we have our plant we're now ready to put that into the pumice rock. Now I just wanted to show you here the length of those roots they're quite long. Now if your plant's roots are deeper than the cavity that you've put into the pumice rock, that's still okay, all right? Because the plants will then adapt to that cavity within the pumice rock and they'll still grow without any problems because I had experience with this when I had my experimental rock garden, when I started that, the same situation occurred where the roots of the plant was longer or deeper than the cavity, but the 
uh, the plant still grew very, very well. So don't be too concerned about that, okay? So we're just going to put that, just dig it a little bit down the bottom of that pumice rock. We're just going to place that plant into it like this, carefully. And just and just very carefully start putting peat moss around their roots. Like that. Just and when you're doing this, try not to trigger any traps if at all possible, okay? I know it's sometimes hard to do. But uh, I just like to do that just to conserve energy for the plant. So just going to put that up there like that. Just try to put it into the middle of the cavity, that plant, to allow any offshoots to uh, room to grow. Because as you, as you may know, Venus's fly traps love to bring up colognes of itself around the middle where the rhizome is. So just do that. So just keep doing that. Just try not to put any peat moss into the traps as well because that will trigger them. Okay, so the plants in the pumice stone now. We've nicely packed the peat moss around the roots. Now, as I showed you earlier, I did break off that top layer from the pot because there was some green moss on there. Hopefully you can see that. So what I do in this instance, just try to keep the shape. So um, allow a bit of room where the plan is for the for the moss to go into so don't fill it completely up to the top if you've got moss to put in on top so what I do is just like to just break it up very carefully and what will happen is that will sort of stay together because it's established and that will then make it easier to just place into the plant like that okay so you don't have to let's just zoom in there a bit so just put that in very carefully. You don't want to sort of damage the moss too much, but just enough to push it into the peat moss. And it sort of make it a little bit flush with the pumice stone itself. Now I've got a few more pieces of moss that I'm going to put in there. Break off some of those leaves, those old leaves. And then put that around the base carefully. that's it that's all you have to do okay and that in time will establish itself and start to grow very nicely around the base of the plant now also what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in some live sphagnum moss now that's that lush green moss that I showed you earlier in the video so this is what it looks like here it's just bits and pieces of live sphagnum moss doesn't look like much now but in time when it gets established it will turn nicely green and then it will grow very nicely in that pumice stone so i'm just going to also put that into the base of that plant just with my fingers put that in there like that Put that in there like that as well. This is exactly how I created my rock planters before with that rock garden that I created earlier. So same technique and I know it works. So all you've got to do is just pat that down around the base and uh, keep it nicely wet, that peat moss by sitting that pumice stone in a tray of water and that sphagnum moss will start to grow along with all the other type of mosses that you may have. 
and of course the main plant will also grow as well. So that's what it looks like. So you can see how I've left a lot of room around the plant. You don't want to overfill the cavity because you want room for that plant to grow and to develop. Of course you also want the moss to grow as well. So that's what the cavity and the pumice stone planter looks like. So just water the peat moss around the roots of the plant. That ensures that the peat moss settles nicely around the roots. It also washes away any excess peat moss around that live moss, just making it a lot more presentable, okay? And if you want, you can also wash away some of the excess peat moss on the pumice rock itself. So there you have it, how to make your very own pumice rock planter and plant it with your favourite carnivorous plant. All you've got to do now is place that pumice rock into a tray, fill that tray up with water, and the pumice rock being so porous will absorb that water, hydrating the plants within it. And just another tip, it's a good idea to protect this planter from any strong rain, which is just around the corner here. Um, because that peat moss and the moss around the base of the plant is still loose, it hasn't established itself, it's vulnerable to being dislodged by any heavy rain. So keep it in a protected area from any strong rain until those plants become more established. So until next time everyone, happy growing, and I can't wait to see your creations with pumice stone rock planters.